Hallelujah. Lord, you are worthy of honor and glory. Lord, you are worthy of power and praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So wonderful to be in the house of the Lord today. Aren't you glad that we can feel his presence here? So thankful for his goodness and his mercy. And I tell you what, I was reminiscing a little bit as we sang that song. Uh, we went to a concert, I think one of our very first concerts when Don and I were dating, uh, to see Carmen. And when we heard this song, I'm telling my age. But I'm telling you what, it's still, it's great now, just like it was back then. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. We want to get into the word of the Lord this morning. On Wednesday night, uh, the Lord had some other plans. And I, I'm so thankful that this church and our pastor is sensitive to the moving of the Spirit. And I appreciate that sometimes we just need to step aside and let the Lord do what he would do. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and let you all be seated because I do have a lengthy passage to read today. A few, <clears throat> a few, about a week ago, there was a memory that popped up in my Facebook feed. And in that memory was just a little nugget that I had posted five years ago. And I just couldn't seem to get away from it. So today, I want to read to you, in this season where we honor the birth of our Savior, how we love Him, I want to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. Seeks not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinks no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. You see, charity never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. What would you do to show someone that you love them? That's the $20 million question. Would you buy them a gift? Would you give them a kidney? Would you give your life in place of theirs? 
seen some very extravagant proposals. And it's all about one person showing their love for another. So I want to tell you a quick story. Loosely based on the gift of the Magi by O. Henry. And I've taken the liberty to update it to the 21st century. So you see there was Jordan and Taylor. Jordan and Taylor were this great young couple, recently married. And like so many young couples, they didn't have a lot of money. It was, they barely had enough to make it from week to week. How many of y'all have been there? Right? We've all been there. So, Jordan and Taylor, they had two very prized possessions. They lived very humbly. They rented an apartment. They didn't have a lot, but they loved each other fiercely. So, Jordan's favorite possession was his PS4. And Taylor's possession was her new, her favorite possession was her new iPhone. So those were their favorite things, and they, they spent some time, they would even play games together or whatever, and it came Christmas. And they loved each other so much, Taylor thought, you know what, I really don't need this iPhone. I can stick with one of those junky Android things. So she went over and she sold her iPhone so that she would have enough money to buy Jordan an accessory pack for his PS4. So she was so excited. It was Christmas Eve and Jordan came through the door after a long, hard day at work. And Taylor was like, You've got to open your gift. I'm so excited for you to open your gift. So they went ahead and Jordan opened his gift. But instead of the the laughter and the excitement that Taylor expected, when he opened the gift and saw what he received, there was dead silence. And she said, what's wrong? You've been wanting this forever. He said, open your gift. You see, Taylor had wanted a new bejeweled case for her beloved iPhone. You know, one of those blingy kind, right? So she opened it. And once again, there was silence. You see, he sold his PS4 to get the case for her. She sold her iPhone to get the accessory pack for him. Their most beloved possessions because they truly loved one another. So I want to read 1 Corinthians 13 to us once again in the, in the message translation. And I think that it breaks breaks a few things down, at least in my mind, and just listen to this. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump and it jumps but I don't love I'm nothing if I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr but I don't love I've gotten nowhere so no matter what I say what I believe and what I do I'm bankrupt without love you see love never gives up Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. It doesn't have a swelled head. It doesn't force itself on others. It isn't always me first. It doesn't fly off the handle. It doesn't keep score of the sins of others. It doesn't revel when others 
when others grovel. It takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. It puts up with anything. It trusts God always. It always looks for the best. It never looks back, but keeps going to the end. You see, love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth. And what we say about God is always incomplete. But when he who is complete arrives, our incompletes will be canceled. When I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like any infant. When I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then. See it all as clearly as God sees us. Knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, everybody say right now. Until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward that consummation. Number one, trust steadily in God. Number two, hope unswervingly. And number three, love extravagantly. And the best of the three is love. So today I want to talk to you for just a few minutes. And I have to tell you, church, that this is straight from my heart. Is extravagant love. When we talk about loving, extrava ex loving extravagantly, we always have to remember the importance of loving God. And how do we love God? We love Him by keeping His commandments. When we keep His commandments, you see, He laid out a few things for us to do. And when we keep His commandments, that is how we express our love for Him. We honor Him. You see, when we honor Him, that means we talk to Him. We spend time with Him. Just as we communicate with each other, we need to communicate with God. But more than just talking, because that's one of the biggest problems, is that we just want to talk, but we don't want to listen. So when we say talk to God, we need to say communicate with God. That we talk to Him, but then sometimes we just have to cut everything else out, remove all the distractions... So that we can listen to what he has to say. So during this holiday season, I think it's so important when we talk about extravagant love that we have to first start out with loving God. The next thing that we have to do is to love others. We need to be kind. One of the things that in this day and age that we see is I think people have forgotten how to be kind to each other, to be respectful, to, to speak appropriately. It's so important, church, if we're going to let our light shine as Christians, as followers of Christ, that we are kind to each other, that we're kind to the stranger, that we're kind to our family. We need to be genuine. Now, what does that mean? Being genuine means you don't have a hidden agenda. I was talking with someone at work recently. Actually, it was my former boss who, who left the company to, to go and do something different. And he called me and he said, I'm just calling to check in with you. And he said, John, I want you to know that I appreciate the fact that when you came on my team, that you were genuine and you didn't have a hidden agenda and you were kind and you were respectful and I learned from you. Why? Just because. I just want, I'm just me. I, I want to let God's love shine through me. 
the other thing when we talk about loving others is we need to be helpful. There is absolutely nothing wrong with trying to open the door for someone. Preferring your brother, preferring your sister. And that could be in so many, I'm not just talking about a literal door. I'm talking about helping each other, whether it's in ministry, whether it's on the job, wherever you are in life, help somebody out. Someone helped you, it's your turn to help others. I truly appreciated Brother Daniel's um, sermon the other Wednesday night. And I told, I told my wife, and, and my family was actually here, my mom and my dad, so you don't hear many 30-year-olds talking about helping somebody else. And I appreciated that, Brother Daniel. Absolutely. And the, one of the other things that I wanted to make mention of when we talk about loving others, the greatest gift that you can ever give someone is the gift of time. When we talk about loving extravagantly, we are not talking about going out and spending thousands of dollars that none of us have to buy somebody a gift. I'm talking about the most precious gift you can give someone, and that is your time. Spending time with your children. Spending time with your spouse. Listen, if you don't know how to be romantic, Google it. I'll repeat it. If you don't know, gentlemen, if you do not know how to be romantic, Google it. I'm sure there are tons of ideas out there that will fit your relationship. Some guys just don't know how to be romantic. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with taking your wife on a date night. Nothing wrong. Trust me, there are times when I look back and I think about how many long hours I spent at work when I could have been home with my wife. In the end, what matters most is that you've communicated, that you've connected, that you show her that you love her. Give the gift of time. When I look back to my childhood, the things that impress me the most were not some expensive gift. It was the time that my mom and my dad spent with me doing silly stuff, playing Uno, right? Whatever, whatever it is, spend time with your family. The last thing that we need to do when we talk about extravagant love is to love yourself. A great problem in our society today. You see, God created you. Why do you criticize his creation? You see, if you don't like the person you've become, it's pretty simple. Change yourself. Think about Scrooge in the Christmas Carol. When he had some things flash before him, what did he do? He changed himself. He figured out a way because he didn't like what he saw. He didn't like who he was becoming. So he changed himself. And that's what we have to do. If we take just a few minutes to think about ourselves, to think about our lives, to think about our personalities, and if we see something that we don't like, we need to change ourselves. We need to ask God to help us. And finally, give yourself permission to make mistakes. Now, that does not mean authorization. But permission. Because we're human, we're going to fail. I grew up, I was very hard on myself. And if I didn't get an A in everything, I thought I was a failure. And it took me a while to realize that I'm not going to be the best at everything. But I needed to figure out what I was. What, what were my strengths? And then to 
hone those and be fine with that, right? Sometimes we're too hard on ourselves. Give yourself permission to make a mistake. You see, extra, excuse me, extravagant love is not predicated on understanding. Sometimes we don't understand why God allows things to happen. We don't always understand why people do what they do. Why do they act the way they act? Why do terrible things happen to good people? I recently asked myself that very question. You see, through the fog of not knowing God's perfect will, we must love Him anyway. Through the shadows of disappointment and hurt that comes from caring for others, we must love them anyway. That's what Job said in Job 13 and 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I hope that you will allow me a moment of vulnerability this morning. Many of you all know what we've been facing the last few weeks. And you see, I don't understand why my beautiful, loving, God-fearing, and anointed wife has cancer. I can't explain it. But that is not going to stand in the way of my love for Jesus and for people. I'm going to still love him. I'm going to serve him. You see, that's what extravagant love is all about. Loving him in the good times and the bad. So in closing today, how do we show extravagant love? We show extravagant love by doing the unexpected. By showing love to a discouraged and lonely world. This Christmas season, I challenge you to show Jesus extravagant love. Show your family extravagant love. Show your friends and neighbors extravagant love. What about showing a complete stranger extravagant love? Don't be afraid to do a random act of kindness. You see, Jesus showed extravagant love because he came. He left the splendor of heaven to come as a babe in the manger. He lived as our Messiah and King of Kings. And he died so that we could have eternal life. You see, he came, he lived, and he died. That, my friends, is extravagant love. I wonder if we would stand today And I want to ask you to do a heart check this morning. Here's the first question. Do I truly love Jesus? Is there anything in my life that would prevent me from having a relationship with him? Do I love my family? Am I doing everything possible to show them that love? Do I have any feuds, rifts, or arguments that need to be stopped or resolved? Am I willing to help others who are in need? I have no idea what's going on in your life. 
I shared with you what's going on in mine. All of us come from different walks of life, from different paths, different family circumstances. But we're all here today. And the reason that we're here today is because we love Him. Because we want to serve Him. Because He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And that's the thing we all have in common this morning. is His extravagant love. As the musicians and singers begin this morning, I wonder if we could just lift our hands and begin to examine our hearts and our minds to say, Jesus, is there anything that would prevent me from having a relationship with you? Lord, is there anything in my heart or my life that would prevent me from exhibiting extravagant love? Are there wrongs that I need to make right? Are there things I need to let go of? Are there things, Lord, that you need to change in me so that I can be who you want me to be? I can be the Christian that, that you want me to be. I can be the husband, the wife, the father, the mother that you desire for me to be. of life, I still trust you. Still I will trust you. Still I will follow. Still I will listen to something going on with someone in this church, I want to give you a minute to go and ask for their forgiveness. I have no idea what's going on. I don't know. I just felt very strongly that in this service, we need to make wrongs right. We need to ensure that our hearts and our minds are clean and pure. Maybe as someone in your family that you need to ask for their forgiveness. As we sing again, I want you just to take a minute 
to let the presence of the Lord envelop you. And if you feel that nudge, that nudge in the Holy Ghost, I want you to go find that brother or find that sister and ask for their forgiveness. Let's not leave today with anything but a pure heart and a clear mind. In the name of Jesus. Rages on and I can't.
share something with you this morning there are moments in my life and there are moments in your life where our limited vocabulary will not do for us what it needs to do for us in those hours where we just don't understand and we cannot trace the steps of God but it's in those moments that I must find myself praying in the Holy Ghost and letting the Spirit of God take me to the place that only He can take me to where the peace of God would rest upon me which passeth all understanding I want you right now, there's some of you in this house that your vocabulary is very limited in regards to what you know to pray because of the things you're facing and going through. And it's hard to see the steps of God in your life. But all I encourage you to do today or right now under the anointing of the Holy Ghost is all across this building, raise your hands right now. And I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Every man, every woman, every person, every child, every guest. That's it.